اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان ارسلنا نوحا الى قومه ان انذر قومك من قبل ان ياتيهم عذاب الیم قال يا قوم اني لكم نذير مبين ان اعبدوا الله واتقوه واطيعون يغفر لكم من ذنوبكم ويؤخركم الى اجل مسمى ان اجل الله اذا جاء لا يؤخر لو كنتم تعلمون قال رب اني دعوت قومي ليلا ونهارا فلم يزدهم دعائي الا فرارا وإني كلما دعوتهم لتغفر لهم جعلوا أصابعهم في آذانهم واستغشوا ثيابهم وأصروا واستكبروا استكبارا ثم إني دعوتهم جهارا ثم إني أعلنت لهم وأسررت لهم إسرارا فقلت استغفروا ربكم إنه كان غفارا يرسل السماء عليكم مدرارا ويمددكم بأموال وبنين ويجعل لكم جنات ويجعل لكم أنهارا صدق الله العظيم This surah is called Surah Nuh named after a great prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam extremely important message towards the da'wah inviting people to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how to invite obstacles that we face on our way how to deal with people who are not accepting what are the benefits for people accepting because Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam are only da'i, they are only inviting. But we, the followers, as we are the da'i, we are the ones who would invite, we are the ones who would always be invited also. So we have both positions and therefore we have to understand the benefit of inviting and the benefit of accepting. At the time of reading those ayahs, and inshallah we will get to them later on, I don't know if this week, <coughs> the benefit of accepting the da'wah of Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam, we will have to keep our minds very open, and not just open, we have to renew, renew our faith. Our Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before going to the ayahs and remind ourselves that we are talking about someone who does not have the word impossible in his dictionary. There is nothing called impossible for him. And number two, rules are the ones that he makes, not what the ones that we make. The effect in things are the one that he puts in, not the one that we think they are in it. The results are according to how he wants, not we like. And this is sometimes a misunderstanding in our mind that after doing something, we like a result. And then... Many times we doubt it if we won't get those results because we have done our best and we think if I have done it, I should get the result. And looking at the means that we are using, most of the time we just depend on these means and forget putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine how many times at the time when a person is not feeling good and he's given a medicine, a tablet, 
that person recites Bismillah and he eats the medicine also, how much trust we have in that Bismillah and how much trust in that tablet? How much trust we have in that medicine and how much trust we have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much trust we have in those physicians and how much trust we have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's a question that each person has to answer it for him and herself. We cannot talk on behalf of anyone else. But if we really answer the question properly, we will have to admit that we need to really renew our faith. Talk more about our faith. Get into more details of our faith. Get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than what we already know. This reminds me how many times we have the posters with the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But with all of those posters, and we might have them at our home also, how many of those names do we understand? How many of those names we recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it, not only just knowing Al-Ali, but we also know what does this Al-Ali means for me. When we see the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Adl, how does it apply to me? How do I benefit from Al-Adl, Jalla Jalalu? Al-Latif, how does it apply to me? What's my relationship with Al-Latif, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being Al-Latif? Just think about it, that if we don't even know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then how much do we recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what do we know of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of our Creator? We all will say and claim that our greatest relationship is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and of course I'm sure it is. No doubt it is. But that relationship is getting so weak that we don't even know the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we don't know these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how are we going to benefit from them? How are we going to join our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these attributes? Hardly most of us would understand only a couple of these attributes. We hear, we read, Ar-Rahim, we know, okay, merciful. Ar-Rahman, we know it. But Ar-Razzaq, we know it because we like it all the time. We like to get more and more of our rizq. But let's go into the other ones. And out of 99, hardly there will be 5 or 10. If a person knows 10 of them, he might be a good scholar of Islam. And this is something very basic. Names of Allah. Attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through His attributes. Because we cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. We have no way of meeting, meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the way we join our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through His attributes, through His qualities, by benefiting through these. And every time knowing how does it apply to my situation, and in that situation then we will contact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that direction. A child who knows that his father will help him financially and at the same time the father is a doctor so will treat him also will take care of his health also and the father has a car also so will give him ride whenever he needs so of course whenever the child needs any of these things will contact his father for one of these things so he's attached to the father by through one of these things <coughs> But if a child knows that my father is not, doesn't know anything about medicine, 
So of course, the child now, whenever needs any medicine, will contact someone else. Because the father is not a doctor. The child knows father has no information about the law. So will not contact the father at the time of needing any legal advice, will contact a lawyer. Because we don't know the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the time where we are in need of something, we do not contact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we don't know all of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we start contacting every other person in the world except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we have not recognized Allah with all of his attributes and qualities. And that's the only reason our relationship is not getting stronger and we don't find ourselves always getting back to him. In fact, sometime when we read a hadith that a sahabi did two raka'a salah and he started getting all the food. Uh, uh, a person doing two raka'a salah in the desert when he was attacked by his enemy and someone came and, came and killed the enemy and he, he couldn't even see who the person was. And those type of things... We feel, yeah, it might be something very special with those people. But we don't have the same type of things. The reason is because we don't have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have not recognized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I was saying, when we read the benefits of accepting the da'wah of, of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of accepting the da'wah from Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam, and remember, up to this day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is inviting all of us and up to this day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to all of us each and every ayah of Quran that we recite Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to all of us and he's talking to us even up to this day this is his kalam, his words his word never gets old and it's not only for a certain group of people his word is for all the human beings till the day of judgment and it applies to each and every person. Just the way it applied to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam. Insha'Allah we will get into those details as we go further into the surah. So I was mentioning that this is the theme of the surah. Telling us the importance of the da'wah, of inviting and accepting the invitation. Obstacles that people face while inviting people to Islam. How to deal with those situations. And what are the benefits of accepting the message of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. And mainly the whole story starts with Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam in the surah. And this is why the surah is called Surah Nuh. Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam. was a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was sent with the code of life. After Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was salam, there were many prophets. But Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, that simply means there were many prophets, means that there were prophets of Allah that came and they were conveying the same message and the same sharia of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was salam. Then Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam came as a messenger of Allah with a new code of life. And he started inviting people to Islam. From the ayahs of Al-Quran al kareem we know that فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا At that time people started worshipping idols and they used to worship idols. Allah sent him that go and ask people to stay away from these idols and worship Allah alone. He was there for 950 years inviting them to the deen of Allah. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu says, as it has been rated in many tafsir, including tafsir ibn Kathir, that the total age of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was 1050 years. He was 40 years of age when he received the prophethood. And normally, Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam received the prophethood at the age of 50. Then for 950 years, he was inviting his people to Islam. But when they rejected, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed that nation. 
and then he lived for 60 more years after the nation was destroyed. So 40 years before and 60 years after, that's 100 years and 950 years he was inviting people to Islam. That comes all together to 1050 years. That, that was the total age of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. When Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, I will go inshallah very briefly from different ayahs of the Quran al Kareem about the, how he invited people to Islam and what did he face in his way. And then inshallah we'll go into the detail of it as we go into the surah. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, when he invited people towards the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, basically there were three messages. And all the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam came with mainly three messages. Number one, Tawheed. Oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, don'ts in Islam. Which means refrain from all the things that are against the Sharia of Islam. Refrain from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, do's. That these are the things that you have to do. These are the faraid of Islam. So Tawheed, don'ts and do's. These are the three main messages of all Anbiya alayhim salatu wasalam. And this is what Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam invited people to. And we find many ayahs of the Quran al kareem how he conveyed the message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِ مَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشْرًا مِثْلَنَا This is in Surah Hud. That his people said to him that you are just a human being like us. You want to be better than us? How can you become our teacher? How can you become the one who would be followed? مَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشْرًا مِثْلَنَا you are just a human being like us. And that was one of the main reasons that they did not want to accept Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam as a prophet of Allah. So in other words, they wanted a messenger of Allah who would not be a human being like them. But you can realize and understand that if a prophet will come, a messenger of Allah would come from amongst the angels or jinns any other creature than human beings, he would be doing so many things that we as human beings can never perform. As angels, he, angel he cannot, he does not have to eat, drink, sleep, have rest, never gets tired. And then we'll say we cannot follow him, you know, he's an angel. We cannot be angels. If he's of jinns, he will have special things that he can perform that we cannot do it. And then we'll say that, you know, he is a jinn. We cannot follow a jinn. We cannot be like a jinn. This is why he's doing all of that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a human being to us because we are human beings and we need to follow a human being. So that when he does something, we can understand that human beings is able to do it. So therefore, why can't I do it? I have to follow a human being like me. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, finally, when he invited people 950 years, even the people were tired of him. And they said to him, Ya Nuh, Nuh, you have been arguing with us for a long time. Now you have argued too, too, too much with us. Now bring the punishment if you are truthful. Still we don't believe in you. So if you are right, don't invite us anymore. Please don't talk to us about these things anymore. فَأْتِنَا بِمَا تَعِدُنَا Bring the punishment if you're right. Let's just destroy us. He replied, إِنَّمَا يَأْتِيكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ And then he raised his hands to make dua against those people. Ya Allah, 950 years is a lot of time. And still these people don't want to accept. So he made the dua, Rabbi la tadar ala al-ardi min al-kafirin adayyara. Ya Allah, do not leave a single family of these disbelievers in the world. Destroy all the disbelievers from the world. And the dua was accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to make a boat. He used to make the boat and as he was making the boat, they used to make fun of him and laugh at him. That where are you going to get the water from? Where are you going to drive your boat? 
And this is always remember from the beginning of cre- cre- uh, beginning, uh, beginning of the creature and beginning of the world. There has always been a conflict between human understanding and the revelation. Human understanding sometimes cannot understand the revelation and cannot understand how Allah will work behind things. And many times, <coughs> losing trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we just go with our own understanding. How is it possible? How can it happen? And we start questioning. How do we question? Solely depending on our understanding and our information. But of course, we know that Sayyidina Nuh والسلام, after making the boat and getting all the believers in his boat, he got the water, the water came and rest of the people were destroyed. Nuh والسلام, wanted his family which means his wife and his son also to be in the boat. But of course, because they did not believe in him, they could not get into the boat and they did not get into the boat. A very important lesson for every human being that everyone will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his and her deeds. No one can depend on others that I would go to Jannah because of my father, my brother, my sister, my mother, my husband, my wife. The prophets of Allah could not do anything for their own wives, for their own children. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called his relatives. He said, Fatima come, Abbas come, his uncle. He used to regard his uncle just like his father. Abbas come. And oh Bani Hashim, all of you come, I would like to say something to you. When they gathered, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Anqidhu anfusakum min nar Protect yourself against the hellfire. On the day of judgment, don't expect that you would go and say that my father, my brother, my husband was Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for that reason I would go to Jannah. It will not help. You have to get your own deeds. Of course, illa rahiman abulluha bi balaliha. He says the relationship that I have, I would try to get your deeds, get extra. Wet, uh, the word he used, balal, that means I would have little wet. Your deeds will get little wet by my relationship, which means you will see them little fresher, little better because of my relationship with you. But you have to have those deeds. Without those deeds, I will not be able to take you straight just to Jannah just because you are related to me. So, this is what happened. Sayyidina Nuh والسلام, made dua for his, own, for his own son. But the son said, he said, Oh my son, get into the boat. The son replied, I will get on, the, on a mountain that will protect me against this water. Sayyidina Nuh replied, There is no way that anyone, anything can help you against the punishment of Allah today. Except the rahmah of Allah. Illa mar rahim, except if Allah will have rahmah on you. And the rahmah is, you get into my boat. Same thing, today our deen is this boat. And the only way of getting the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is getting into this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Getting into this boat of the sharia of Islam. If we start running here and there, there is nothing that can help against the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the uh, surah, Inna arsalna nuhan ila qawmi. Indeed, we send Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam to his people. And anzir qawmak that warn you people, warn your people, min qabli an ya'tiyahum adabun alim. Before some painful torment comes to them. Warn them before the punishment would come to them. And if you look at the ayah, it looks like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying these people because of idol worshipping and all the other sins that they have been committing. 
punishment is to come and is about to come. Arsalna Nuhan ila qawmi. We said to Nuh salam, go to your people. Quickly go and stand in whining them before they are called into that punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Simply means when a nation starts going away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the punishment of Allah is just hanging over their head and is about to fall on these people at any time. And any time these people will be trapped and will get into that punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As soon as someone starts stopping them from evils, as soon as people amongst the community, from within the community, will instead conveying the message of Islam and will try to hold people from getting into all of those evils. When we have people who will be concerned about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will hold the punishment back. Imagine, the ayah is saying the punishment is about to come. Go and convey the message and tell them that a punishment is about to fall on you people. You people better stop doing all of these sins. And 950 years it was delayed because hopefully today, tomorrow, sometime these people would listen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the chance. But the thing we need is, we need people who would come up and who would come out. Speak for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who would speak on behalf of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who would come out and tell the people that this is haram. Will not be allowed in our places. This is not allowed in our homes. This is not allowed in our community. This will not be allowed in our gatherings. This will not be allowed in our masajid. This will not be allowed in our deen. This is not allowed in our deen. We will never accept these type of things in our deen. They have to be people in the community of that type of people, of that kind. And the time we, when we don't have those type of people, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. There are hundreds of ahadiths conveying the same message. Hundreds of ahadiths where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have reminded us, of the, uh, reminded us of this fact. In fact, look at the ayahs of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Bani Israel, one of the main problems that they never used to stop each other from doing the evils. They would see people doing evil and they would just see it and turn their face away will not stop them from doing it. Allah says one of the worst things that they were doing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explaining the very same situation said in the hadith that the situation of Bani Israel was such that their scholars were inviting them and whenever they saw them doing something wrong they would tell them not to do it but if the people would not stop وَاكَلُوهُمْ وَشَارَبُوهُمْ that he continued eating with them, drinking with them, joining them in all of their gatherings just like there is nothing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they have seen the people doing wrong and still they are with them. فَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَ بَعْضِهِمْ بِبَعْضِ Allah made the hearts of those scholars be like the hearts of those sinners. The hearts of the scholars became like the hearts of those sinners. Why? Because, not because they were not stopping them. They stopped them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says they stopped them. But when they did not listen and they did not obey, they continued doing that sin. These scholars continued associating with those people just as normal, joining them in all of their gatherings with all the haram and evils. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it clearly, that they were eating with them, they were drinking with them, doing everything with them. So that was the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the hidayah away from the hearts of these scholars also. <clears throat> of course, a clear message for all of us. That if we think that we can never stop the evil, our responsibility then is to stay away from it. Of course, we cannot just stay away. We have to make sure the message is conveyed. This is wrong. But after conveying the message, if those people continue doing it, doesn't mean we give up and we'll say, okay, we'll be part of you now. Just the way normally we would say, 
we like to have unity. For the sake of unity, we would do it. Subhanallah. What unity are we talking about? Unity on sins? Unity on disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uniting against the deen of Allah? Uniting against the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Of course, Allah doesn't want that type of unity. In fact, when that happens, then the whole nation gets into the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the punishment as it comes, it afflicts the whole nation. Does not just choose those people who are doing the wrong. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have mentioned this point very nicely in a beautiful example. When he said, he gave the example saying that people are traveling in a boat. And there were some people on the upper level and some people in the bottom level, in the deck. Now, so those people who are in the bottom, they need water and they have no way of getting the water except going from up and then throwing the bucket down. As always, they would go up and they would throw the bucket down, get fill the bucket of water and then they go downstairs. So, of course, the people up are being, being disturbed. That every time you are walking through our ways, you are jumping on top of us, the water is spilling in here and it's, our level is getting wet. We don't want you people to come up here anymore. So those people, they, they have to have water. When they ran out of water, they started asking each other what to do and finally they decided that we can't go upstairs, that choice is out, so let's make a hole in the boat. And we, have, we will get the water from that hole. So people upstairs heard some, heard some noise. Where the noise from? When they went down and they saw them, they are making the ass. Then what are you doing? We are making a hole because you told us not to come up and we need some water. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if those people are wise, the one on the upper level, they would tell them, okay, you can disturb us anytime. Come and get the water whenever you want. And if they won't do that, and they just want to have peace of mind up there, they can have it for some time until these people will make the hole and then all of them will be drawn together. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through this beautiful example is telling us when we see the wrongdoers amongst the uh, within the community and amongst the ummah and we always hear those noises that people are doing this, that person's children are going away, those people are doing this, the other community, the other community did so many things and then not only this we sit together we laugh at them look those people had a dance in the masjid those people were having a mixed gathering in the masjid those people had that type of haram things in the masjid we sit and laugh at them rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no don't just sit up there and laugh go and stop those people try to do something to prevent those people from getting into that otherwise as you're hearing all of this noise that those people were doing this and the other people are digging another hall and the third group of people are digging another hall, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you want to stop them and once the hall is made over there, all of you will be drawn together, not only those people. We are all in the same boat. And this is, of course, extremely important message that we need to understand we need to write it in our mind. We need to keep it in our mind at all the time. And it has to be not only written and grieved in our mind, so it will never be erased from there. Understanding that when we have people around us who are doing wrong, we have to stop those people from doing it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, when a person sees man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yughayyirhu bi yadihi a person who would see something wrong going on should the wording of the hadith is fal lam means should should change it with his hand with the power use his power to stop that evil that i won't allow you to do this fa in lam yastati' fa bi lisani if you don't have the power that's the condition remember is not that if you don't want, or you are shy, or you are ashamed. No. That's the condition. If he cannot, then use your tongue. And if you cannot, If you cannot even use your tongue, you have no power of using your tongue, then through your heart, dislike it, 
stay away from it, don't be part of it. وَذَٰلِكَ أَضْعَفُ iman. This is the weakest point of Iman, just disliking it and staying away from it. And if that thing is not there, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, even the weakest part of Iman is not there. So what's after that? When he tells us that even the weakest part of Iman is not there. Subhanallah. Nowadays, our situation really have gone too far away. Would us, those of us who are considered to be good Muslims, those of us who are considered to be virtuous people, in our lives we have so many wrong things. And if a person would try to correct us, we get upset. That you're telling me? You're talking to me? Don't you know that I'm learned, I'm better than you? I have been doing more salah than you. I have been practicing Islam better than you. We will use all of these excuses. And in fact, shaitan will make us feel one way or other that he has no right of correcting me. Who is he to correct me? Subhanallah. And if a person is beyond correction, then of course his only, the only way is his towards his way of destruction. Because if he cannot be corrected, then he has to be destroyed. There is no human being in the world who is beyond correction. And therefore, even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be corrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to correct the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, you should do this, you should, do, you should have done it this way. And one day, he forgot to say insha'Allah, insha'Allah not for his personal work. People are asking him questions to determine whether he's a true prophet of Allah or not. Now is a big challenge. Ya Allah, tomorrow you prove me that I'm a true prophet of Allah. All of these people will get into Islam. You send me as a messenger. You send me to invite these people. You send me with the purpose of getting these people into Islam. Ya Rasulullah is an, ya Allah is an opportunity. And here he says to these people, they ask the questions. He says, come tomorrow, I'll give you the answers. And he knows that tomorrow he will be getting the new revelation giving him the answers to all of these questions. Next day, he's waiting and waiting and waiting. No revelation comes. They came to and asked him, Muhammad, what happened? What's the answer to our questions? He said, I don't know it. But still, I have to wait for another day. Come tomorrow. And he had to wait for 15 days. 15 days before the revelation came back, came to him, saying to him, وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ Do not say about anything that you would do it tomorrow without adding insha'Allah to it. Because you did not say insha'Allah I would give you the answers tomorrow. Therefore the revelation was delayed for 15 days. This is the messenger of Allah. And he's doing the work of Allah. And even at this time, he's excited. These people are going to accept Islam. It will be proven to them that I am a true messenger of Allah. They have brought a challenge. They put a challenge in front of me. These are the three questions. I answer the three questions and, and they would admit that I am a true prophet of Allah. So come tomorrow. And subhanallah, see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching him. So no one is beyond corrections. And with that we need to keep in mind that we should always be looking for corrections from each other. If a person sees us doing something wrong and does not correct us, of course he's not favoring us. He's not our friend. A person who would see that sitting with you, he's talking to you, and he sees a person coming from your bag with a knife in his hand about to stab you in your bag, and you say, I would better stay quiet. If I say it, he might be hurt. But if you won't say it, then you're putting him in a more difficult situation. You are not favoring him by not telling him. Same thing with all of these sins, the things that we are doing against the Sharia of Islam. We should be very receptive to corrections because if we don't get corrections from our own people and we won't correct each others, of course, we are getting ourselves into a worse situation. And by not correcting our brothers, sisters, our friends, of course, we are not doing a favor to them.
In fact, we are making them, we will make them go through worse situation with Ayazu Billah if they would die with that situation with those sins. So we should always be ready for corrections and always be ready to bring changes into our lives. Accept the message of Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. The message of Allah and the message of Anbiya alayhi salam is not limited to few things. Each day we need to get more and more of it. And then each day we need to get better and better in our deen. Each day before we go to bed, we should ask ourselves, did today I get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or God forbid I got away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was my practice of this day better in Islam than my practice of Islam yesterday or not? If I did not get any better today, that means I have no concern of my deen. Each day we need to be getting better in our deen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I send Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam to his people and anzir qawmak. Warn your people. We need to keep on warning our people. I mean, قبل أن يأتيهم عذاب أليم Before the painful, painful punishment would come. And then everyone will be part of that, will, will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everyone will be afflicted by that punishment. قال يا قوم Now Nuh alayhi salatu was salam went to his people. And after going to his people, he said, Ya qawm, O my people, Inni lakum nadhirum mubeen. I have been an open warner for you people. I'm warning you people very plainly. This is a very important point for people who are coming up with the da'wah, with the inviting people towards the right direction. Inni lakum nadhirum mubeen. Tell the people that you are my qawm, you are my people. So that's a feeling of closeness. Ya qawmi, O oh my people. So my brother, my sister, my community, my family, whoever, use the best words. The words that will make them feel that you are close to them. But after that, tell them because of this relationship, I owe you something. And the thing I owe you is that I be very clear to you, very open to you. And inni lakum nadhirum mubeen. I see you going on a wrong direction and I know for sure that the punishment is coming soon. And for that reason, I better warn you now. Before it's too late. Before you see all of your deeds and then you will be judged for your deeds. So at this time, I have to really talk to you very openly. Oh my son, oh my daughter, oh my wife, oh my husband, let's sit together. Let's sit and talk. Let us sit and discuss these things with, our, with each other. That you have been missing these salah for so many years. You cannot continue doing this. It will not be accepted. I don't want to miss you and lose you in the Akhirah. I don't want to see you going into the hellfire. I don't want to see you being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inni lakum nadhirum mubeen. I have to talk to you openly sometime. This is because of my relationship with you. Ya qawmi, all my people, you are my people. And the message, the message now is, Ani'budullaha wa attaquuhu wa ati'oon. That worship Allah alone. You should worship Allah alone, fear Allah and obey Him. As I said, three messages all the Anbiya alayhim salatu wasalam came with. Allah, this is Tawheed. Worship Allah, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wattaqu, refrain from all the wrongdoings. Stay away, fear Allah, stay away from all the sins. And number three, Ati'oon, obey me. Don'ts and do's. So Tawheed, <coughs> then don'ts and then do's. And always remember, most of the times, we as Muslims, we take the do's and we do not care too much about don'ts. Whereas Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, in many hadiths, have told us that with do's, don'ts are very important. In fact, if you look at the ayah clear and carefully, you would see that after the ibadah of Allah, which means after iman and the oneness of Allah, the first thing that came after that is don'ts. Wattaqu, fear Allah, and don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. All the things that are forbidden. And then wa'ati'oon, then do's, then do this and this and this, obey me. So, don'ts are very important. In fact, 
in many ahadiths we find a message Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam telling us that if a person will fulfill the fara'id of Islam and will refrain from committing sins is much better than a person who is doing a lot. You will see him in all the nawafil, charities, he's going too deep in all of these things. But at the same time, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also a lot. Islam encourages us, you do less, but refrain from doing sins. Refrain from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's more important. I don't mean that do less, but simply means that when we have the importance of do too much, and I say, after four, then I'm going to do ten more nafils, and I would do so many tahajjud, then I would recite so much Qur'an, and I would give so much charity, and I would go for hajj and umrah every year. And on the other hand, come back home and keep on doing all the sins, and sitting and watching all of the haram, listening to all the haram, and going out in the uh, work, uh, at workplace, and then doing everything that haram, earning the wealth in all the haram means, and haram ways. Of course, it does not help. It's just like, and especially in this part of the world, we will understand this example better, that you put the heat on, and at the same time, keep all the windows open. None of us do that. In fact, we weather tight our windows, and before the winter, we'll make sure, get buy some cocaines, and get some plastic, and do so many things. And subhanallah, I have seen, I haven't seen this thing anywhere in the world the way we do it here in this part of the world. They have taught us that our money, each and every penny is very valuable. And they made us work so hard for it that I have to just keep it. And this is why keep the door closed. If the, someone will keep the window open or the door open for a short while, we will all be shouting at the person irrespective of who that person is, who, how close that person is to us, he can keep that window open, he can keep, this is my five dollars now, five minutes is five dollars for me now. So, five dollars are better than you, you better close the door and get away from here. So, same thing, when a person is doing the ibadahs, and then committing the sins, it's just like keeping the door open and the windows open and throwing everything out of the window. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّقُوهُ وَاطِعُونَ This was the three main things that Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam went to people with. And this is our main theme of the da'wah. Ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get the people to realize and recognize who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come back to their iman, understand their iman and tawheed and aqidah. And then they, start, they have to start learning the don'ts and do's in Islam. And it's something really, we really need to go more and more into the knowledge of this deen to learn more about these things. We have just stopped at certain point. After Iman, after knowing that I was born into a Muslim family or becoming Muslim, and some years we work, we learn a little bit here and there. And then after some time we feel that that's it. I got to the level that now Jannah is guaranteed and that's it for me. No, we have to keep on working. We have not... As I normally say that we don't have any cruise control on our Iman, that we set our Iman on that speed and now it will just keep on going and uh, the, I have set the cruise and I'm satisfied, it will just keep on driving now. There is nothing like this. Each and every action of our life affects our Iman, either gets higher or gets lower. And therefore, we have to be very careful and get more and more, learn more and more about do's and don'ts in our Iman, at the same time learning about the Aqaid. What's the benefit if we do that? يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ Allah will forgive your sins. وَيُؤَخِّرْكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى And will grant you a delay to an appointed time. Which means you will be given a delay, a chance to live for a certain time without punishment. Then of course in the Akhirah you will be judged for your deeds, but at least you will not be punished in this life, the punishment that comes to the kuffar. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Nuh alayhi salatu wa at the time when the punishment was just hanging over their heads. So he's telling them, if you do not, if you, if, if you would listen to this Prophet of Allah, 
And if you st- come back to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the punishment will be taken away from you people. But of course we know that they did not listen and the punishment came. And they all were droned. وَيُؤَخِّرْكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى And he will delay you for an appointed time. إِنَّ أَجَلَ اللَّهِ إِذَا جَاءَ لَا يُؤَخَّرْ Surely Allah's deadline whenever it comes, it will never be postponed. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Only if they are in the known. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks more about how Nuh alayhi salatu was salam invited them. What ways did he use in inviting those people towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he mentioned the benefits. And we look at these benefits, we will think that these are the things that we all are looking for as an ummah. Things that the whole ummah is looking for. The answer is in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But either we don't like to go back to it, or sometime after knowing it, we don't have a trust in it. But inshallah, we will go into that in our next sessions, talking about what's the solution to the problem, and what is the benefit of accepting the message of the messengers of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to surat al-mustaqeem. Aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa li sa'iril muslimina wal muslimat, wa akhiru da'wana, anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.